Okay, so here's our point pound to point. I'm, I have the pro on uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy. As we know, muscle-invasive bladder cancer can be a fatal disease if not taken care of properly. And we know that we can focus on different types of muscle-invasive disease. Uh, this is data from Dr. Stein from a number of years ago from USC. Those patients who have or organ-confined disease and node positive they have a 46% relapse-free survival rate and a 44% 10, 10-year survival rate. Extra vesicle, it goes to 70% of patients relapsing from their disease, both at five and 10 years. And again, all nodal patients, it's about 70% who relapse. So the question is, how can we improve upon our uh, rates of uh, survival in patients with muscle-invasive bladder cancer? Up until the publication of SWOG 8710, which was the randomized trial of neoadjuvant MVAC, uh, no trial had demonstrated survival advantage in favor of chemotherapy, and there are a lot of reasons for this. There were seven published randomized trials. The majority of this had inadequate chemotherapy, either cisplatinum monotherapy or doxorubicin doublet therapy or CMV. But this one, these two trials were actually very, very uh, poorly powered, but none of these trials showed a survival benefit. So in SWOG, uh, through the leadership of uh, Dr. Grossbar, uh, Grossman and Dr. Crawford, uh, we opened up a randomized phase three trial looking at muscle-invasive bladder cancer, and patients were stratified based upon their uh, degree of invasion and also age. They were randomized to receive cystectomy alone or cystectomy uh, preceded by three cycles of MVAC. Uh, these are the patient characteristics, very well balanced in terms of age and also uh, sex. And as one would expect, since this was stratified, the number of patients were e similar in both arms as far as T3 disease and T2 disease was concerned. Now these are the toxicities. This is important to note uh, how toxic this regimen was because at that time, MVAC was considered to be extremely toxic. And if we look at the uh, rates of granulocytopenia, uh, well, it's, this was again before growth factors, fairly high, but no toxic deaths related to chemotherapy. And if you look at patients who have much more advanced disease, giving chemotherapy later on is much more difficult. If we also look at the, the differences between the post-cystectomy complications, we don't really see any differences in hemorrhage, embolisms, edema, infection, and also uh, GU events such as fistulas uh, or wound dehiscence or wound infection. Both of these are about the same overall. So that basically tells us that the chemotherapy does not affect the surgery, that can be, it can be safely given up front. What about survivals? Well, this is by treatment arm, and as we see for all patients, uh, it, it, does, it does seem to be significant. A 74-month median survival for those patients received MVAC versus the control, which is 43.2 months. And these are the medians, again, from before. If we look at those patients who achieve P0 status, these are the ones who uh, have no disease remaining. Uh, MVAC, uh, they're, uh, they're um, uh, overall, uh, uh, five-year survival is about 85%, uh, and uh, those who do not achieve a complete response, it's about 45%. So uh, I think the important caveats from 99, uh, excuse me, 8710, excuse me, where there's similar rates of radical cystectomy in both arms, uh, and so they did achieve cystectomy, and the survival benefits were also seen across all grades and stages, uh, both uh, with the greatest difference being in T3 disease. So you're really affecting the bad actors, but those patients with T2 disease also received a benefit. Now, is there confirmation? The answer is yes. This is Reg Hall's trial from Europe where the patients were randomized to receive CMV chemotherapy. 16% reduction in the risk of death with CMV. Uh, the hazard ratio is 0.84 as, uh, as evidenced by the 16%. And this corresponds to an increase in the 10-year survival from 30 to 36% after CMV. There have been meta-analysis of all neoadjuvant trials, which have basically shown the same thing. Uh, when you look at the neoadjuvant arm, they all seem to favor the neoadjuvant uh, treatment. And this is the Kaplan-Meier curve for all platinum-based combination chemotherapy arms versus uh, cystectomy alone. And there's a 14% reduction in the risk of death in favor of chemotherapy. Now, there are newer regimens that are now being used. This is from the Dana-Farber. Uh, the dose-dense MVAC regimen is basically completing the treatment uh, after, um, 
eight weeks of therapy rather than after three months or 12 weeks that's given with the standard MVAC regimen. Uh, the thought is you can increase the pathological response and reduce toxicity with growth factor support in this uh, shorter duration of administration. It does, it seem, it does seem also that, uh, that this is actually perhaps a more active regimen and uh, there seems to be an increase in both pathological response disease-free survival and overall survival with the dose-dense MVAC regimen. So this has been accepted as a frontline therapy by the NCCN. Uh, GEMSYS versus MVAC, this is briefly a retrospective study. There's really no difference uh, overall uh, when we looked at our data from uh, Columbia uh, retrospectively. So uh, again, the NCCN will accept GEMSYS as an alternative regimen. The other advantage of neoadjuvant chemotherapy is that bladder sparing is certainly possible, although uh, there is a lot of controversy as to whether it should be done or not. In some studies from Harry Herr as well as Corner Sternberg, uh, we're seeing that about three quarters of patients are surviving, about half of those patients with an intact bladder, and then you can actually salvage some patients with cystectomy afterwards. Now, why would I want to do neoadjuvant therapy over adjuvant therapy? Well, unfortunately, to date, there is no study that has shown a survival benefit for adjuvant chemotherapy postoperatively, although we do think uh, that it does work, we all do it, but there is no level one evidence supporting this. Uh, Don Skinner showed possibly an advantage of, of chemotherapy for node positive disease. Stockel showed an advantage of MVEC or MVAC over observation, but this was terminated early. Frank Torty showed his disease free survival advantage, but again, no proven survival benefit. So the advantages of, uh, or the differences are that you can select patients uh, who are at high risk only by the adjuvant, but there's no option for bladder preservation, and then the price uh, of a selection may be increased toxicity, because it's hard to sometimes give chemotherapy postoperatively, and uh, these patients potentially can delay their treatment because of the fact that they're recovering from surgery. The other issue, too, is there may be a diminution of renal function after surgery, and uh, full doses of cisplatinum may not be administered, and thus, again, you may not be able to get the patient adequate treatment. And uh, in my mind, carboplatinum is not an acceptable substitute for cisplatinum. No study has shown this to be equivalent uh, to cisplatinum in this setting. Just one last note, even though we've had adequate chemotherapy and, and better trial designs, we still haven't demonstrated an advantage for adjuvant chemotherapy. This is a study by Cora Sternberg looking at either PT3, PT4, or um, uh, node positive disease. These patients are randomized within 90 days of cystectomy to immediate uh, therapy with a dealer's choice chemo, either GEMSYS, MVAC, or dose-dense MVAC. And uh, the other one uh, had deferred therapy at relapse. Uh, and then they receive six cycles of antichemotherapy. Although there's an improvement in progression-free survival, 2.92 years versus about uh, 0.93 years, when you look at the OS difference, there's, it's not there. And uh, uh, there may have been some advantage for, uh, for MVAC chemotherapy opposed to the other chemos in the situation. So my time is up. And uh, here's the survival curve, a trend but not significantly different. So level one evidence supports the use of neoadjuvant chemotherapy and muscle invasive urothelial carcinoma. There's no survival benefit observed with adjuvant therapy in multiple clinical trials. Survival benefit with neoadjuvant therapy occurs across all pathologic stages. And then chemotherapy, again, may be uh, better tolerated in the neoadjuvant setting. Thank you for your attention.